Was the exit polls a massive stock market scam? Let's take a look. Now, Rahul Gandhi of the Congress Party has addressed a press conference today where he has demanded an investigation into why the Prime Minister, the Home Minister and several others from the BJP advised the people of India to buy stocks and how the stocks actually moved around the release of the exit polls that we then discovered were completely wrong and off the mark. He has actually asked for an investigation over the connection between the BJP, the alleged fake polls, as he called them, and foreign investors. Is there really a need for an investigation? In order to understand that, we have to break this up into three bits. The first bit is the exit polls. Let me pop that up on your screen. These are the four biggest polls, and you can see that they had all given the NDA past 400 and displayed that the BJP would actually surpass its previous accomplishment of 303 and do really well in in this election. They also said that the India bloc would not cross about 150 or 160 according to these polls. Now to say the polls were off the mark is a giant understatement. These polls were wrong. They were directionally wrong. They were wrong with their numbers and they were wrong in, their, in the data that they have collected. But the question is, how were they all similarly wrong at the same time in the same direction? And that's where the question is coming up. On results day, we know what happened. The NDA at 293, of which the BJP only did 240, and uh, the India bloc at 232. Here are the questions that are now being asked. As the pollsters came into the television channels on results day and said, hey, we got it wrong. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes we get it wrong. Everybody said, yes, but how did you all get it wrong at the same time in this manner? To answer that question, we have to look at how exit polls work. Now, exit polls in theory are simply this. When people have voted and they're coming out of the booth, pollsters actually ask them, hey, who did you vote for? Now, uh, Sanjay Kumar of CSDS tells the Hindu that it's done in that way for two reasons. There are two theories. One is people are most likely to tell the truth when they're coming out of the booth and their memories are fresh about who they voted for. Rahul Varma, who is a fellow of the Center for Policy Research and teaches at Ashoka University, explained that surveys should randomly choose people to answer questions, but the sample size should be large enough to represent the population, which means that you need to make sure that you've asked enough people to actually represent all of the population in that constituency. One of the theories that's actually being offered is that people simply lied. They were not forthcoming for whatever reason. Maybe they were afraid. They didn't tell you who they really voted for. But could this have happened across the country, across all polls, across all constituencies and across voting booths? And that really draws a massive question. Now, if we look at how little data and information is available to us about these exit polls, there's not enough information about their sample size, their confidence levels and their margins of error. Um, in fact, in some cases, their sample size is about one lakh people. Compare that to the 100 crore people who voted in this election, it doesn't seem large enough to actually extrapolate correctly. But having said that, I must point out that even in India and across the world, exit polls have gotten it wrong in the past. Let me give you an example. In 2021, the exit polls in West Bengal said that the TMC would lose to the BJP. They didn't. Mamta Banerjee won. In 2020, in Bihar, it said that the JDU BJP NDA would lose. It didn't. It won. And in 2004, you'll remember the big one, Atal Bihari Watch, by losing that election in spite of what the exit poll says. So why is this one different then? It's different because of the stock market. Now, remember, the exit polls came out on Saturday night. Sunday was a holiday. On Monday morning, the stock market went completely bonkers. It had its highest day run in three years, with the Sensex and the Nifty running up almost 3.3%, closing at record highs. What does this actually mean in rupees terms? 14.13 lakh crore rupees was made in the stock market. Gautam Adani's company shares went up to lifetime highs of 12.8%. Mukesh Ambani's shares went up 5.6% in line with the rest of the market. What happened the next day when, the, when those humbling results came out? A bloodbath in the stock market where it fell the most it has fallen in four years. It was gutted. The Sensex and the Nifty went down about 8.5% during the day to end the day at 5.9%. What does this mean in terms of money? 30 lakh crore rupees was lost that day on the stock market. Adani stocks went down 20% across the board. There are something called that the market calls Modi stocks. Uh, these are infrastructure stocks, NTPC, Coal India, ONGC, all of them. 
faced a terrible bloodbath. After that, though, the market is sort of stabilized to its pre-exit uh, poll levels. So here are the questions that are being asked. Now, you will remember May 19th to NDTV, the Prime Minister was giving uh, an interview where he said, wait and watch on the 4th of June, the stock market programmers will get tired of all of the action. Also, the Home Minister to NDTV May 13th had said, basically, uh, I suggest you buy shares before the 4th of June, it will shoot up. The Finance Minister speaking to CNBC TV 18 on the 31st of May, he basically said that the BJP will indicate stability is a positive message for the market, so it could really go up. There are some serious problems here that require some questions. For example, first of all, who within the exit poll uh, companies had access to the data of this exit polls? And were they connected in any way to investors? Because as an investor, let's assume I'm an investor and I know that these exit polls are actually going to predict a big victory. I will know that the stock market is going up and I then can actually place my bets. If within the exit poll company, I know the stock market is going up, but I also know that the exit polls are wrong, then I'll know it's going to crash the next day also. So that then brings these questions. Remember, insider trading is illegal in the stock market. So if you, for example, work for a company and you have access to information about that company that has not been publicly released yet, and you use that information to actually make money in the stock market, it is against the law. That is called insider trading. So here are the questions that I have about this. First of all, who knew about the exit polls and who had access to that data and were they linked to the stock market? Does it qualify as insider trading? Secondly, who sold stock on Monday and made a profit? It's easy for SEBI to find out that information. Thirdly, who bought back that same stock on Tuesday, thereby making a profit from the movement um, of those stocks between Monday and Tuesday. Finally, if the polls were manipulated, who had access to that information and where the pollsters were getting their funding from? Were they, did they have any connections to investors? Did they have any connections to political parties? And why have they not made those disclosures? All of this information needs to be asked and answered, and it can be done with a possible investigation. Now, SEBI needs to investigate insider trading where it finds out who had access to data, who actually leaked that data, and if anybody used that data. It's not hard to do. SEBI's done it in the past. It's just out of practice recently. The Election Commission needs to conduct investigations into the pollsters themselves to find out how those errors happen, where the errors happen, and if anybody had access to the data from uh, those exit polls. They also need to be looking at the possible links that these exit polls does have to politicians, to investors, and to anybody else. The EC should also at this point, in my opinion, maybe relook at the entire idea of exit polls. Do we need them at all? Just two days before the, uh, the final results come out, why do we need exit polls other than the fact that TV news studios get to sell a lot of advertising and make a quick buck on them. There is, of course, a flip side argument, and I give you both sides to every argument. But the flip side argument is when you have exit polls, it helps in preventing voter fraud, and it also gives an idea for politicians to understand how people voted and why they voted that way, which is why we need them. But I do believe that exit polls, if we decide to go ahead with them, need to be a fully regulated activity where it's actually properly regulated and it's not one of these things where people uh, make errors and lots of money is made and lost and they say, hmm, we made a mistake, what can we do about it? It happens. And finally, there's no regulator for television channels and that's the way it should be. Journalism cannot be regulated, but television channels themselves need to stop and think back and consider how they're possibly going to go ahead now and they've completely squandered all their credibility. It is their job to fact check. It is their job to ask the questions I'm asking you right now. And they have not done so. Of course, TV channels have not covered themselves in glory in the last five years based on how they behaved during COVID or the CA protests or the farmer protests. And we'll do a separate story about that. But right now, it is not looking good for them either as they continue to function somehow with a complete 100% loss of credibility. So should there be investigations into this? Perhaps multiple investigations need to happen. Leave me a note if you believe that this should be investigated and how we can prevent something like this from happening again in the future.